G'day, Syntropic Growers and Customers for Fig Tree Organic Farm uh, Syntropic Project. This is video number 39. It was a beautiful winter's day. Coming on full moon. And we get cold mornings and sometimes with a little bit of early frost this year. But we get beautiful sunny days. Quite warm actually. So, a little bit confusing time for the plants. We can't put our papaya in right now until spring because we're worried about losing them. But our other plants should be fine. So we've done our usual row method, but we've trialled a couple of different ideas. And as you know, every time we put in a new row, we're over planting, over planting, over planting. Um, now the interesting thing about this row is that it's cost us nearly nothing except for the um, some of the ukes from Landcare. Uh, all the small sport support species, the puffs. Uh, the jackfruits this time uh, and pigeon pea this is uh, a legume that's moringa that's another type of legume we've all seeded ourselves so in this instance where we've got the cost of the rows right down they used to cost us about 1500 and I'd say uh, this row here probably would have cost us a hundred bucks so we got busy in the uh, hothouse and we seeded out stuff last year and now it's all coming ready. So that's the way to save money if you want to do it on the cheap. Now have a look at this idea here. We've done something a little bit different. Our jackfruits are very sensitive to the cold and a hot sun. They're a fruit tree that likes to grow up in the rainforest. So we've lost a few before already. Uh, so we've tried something new with a, a sort of like a, a square consortium and all, each one of these support plants here are potentially sacrificial um, they all uh, produce nitrogen because they're legumious and they're all great chop and drop type plants so sometimes the moringa here we've seen uh, tubes or video tube tubes showing them at six feet uh, so these guys will gradually grow over this young jackfruit that we planted from seed and provide a little protective umbrella under our, our jack there because these are a bit sensitive. You can see the tips are starting to burn off already in the cold and yet they've been in uh, the hothouse so they're a bit chilly at night I think. So we've put them out here in the elements but why not for your more sensitive fruit trees provide a bit of protection. So that's a nice little family. Now we've gone through and planted something different this time. We've got, instead of the usual ukes, we do have brush box, but we've got uh, um, ice, ice cream bean trees. And we've collected these seeds from our own tree and they're very, very easy to propagate. Now in places like Guatemala and um, Honduras and those places, the poor people living in the mountains stabilize the hillsides by planting these ice cream bean trees uh, in alleyways, in very tightly close-knit walls to prevent uh, soil erosion on these corn rows. So these trees produce quite a nice branch, and not more than an inch or two thick. So they're easy to cut off, they're easy to um, chip, wood chip, and they're also fixing nitrogen. These are a, pioneer, a rainforest pioneer species in places from Colombia all the way down to Bolivia. And of course, you have, you, as you know, they produce a, a big fleshy pod bean and inside is a white berry floss that tastes like vanilla. So they're an interesting tree, they're very fast growing. Um, we have an example two or three meters tall after two years. So we thought we'd try these. Now in Guatemala, they call them Inga trees. They plant them in rows. They cut the branches off. They weave it through the tightly packed um, plantings. They create a bit of a wall on the mountainside. And when their heavy rains come, it washes some of the soil down to the living fence and uh, creates a little bit of a flat. So more, more land to grow on. So they've saved the soil, the usual soil erosion they get when they clear uh, a mountainside jungle. 
Um, the great thing with these is because they're produced from nitrogen, it's preparing the soil for the next corn crop. So in the alleyways, when the time, come, time comes to plant corn, they cut these le uh, fleshy leaves off and cover the corn area. They seed it out and then they cover it with the inga leaves. Um, and then they use the sticks for firewood. So it's a pretty versatile tree. And I've seen one the size of a house at 10 years. So they grow very, very quickly. Moving right along, we've put our moringa in between both sides of bananas. We're using our favourite wattle. Again, our family consortium around the jack. Wattle, moringa, banana moringa, and so on. So we've planted a few little different diverse species, some rainforest types it's in the middle of uh, winter. It's coming up to June, July. We'll see how they go. Uh, but the weather is very, very beautiful and warm, uh, no wind, so we think it should be fine. Now we're slightly doing a different type of irrigation system here today. And this is an inch soft density polypi. And we have the ability to turn off and on uh, the spray, the jet spray. This spray comes out about here. And should our plant die or we want to just uh, change the spot, we can actually turn these little sprayers off. So they're very useful. Now for the more heavy uh, plants, like these bananas here, we'll use a straw, a little spike, a straw, just pierce it with a screwdriver, and we sometimes just tuck that straw under the tube. This will get covered in hay. That will leak one bucket of water in about four or five minutes. But of course, you don't want a bucket of water on your little babies, do you? So why not use one of those little spikes that I described earlier, and that will leak perhaps a quarter of a bucket on a small plant at the same time. So you have the ability to meter the amounts of water depending on the size of the plants. And we know that bananas like a lot, so why not put a straw right next to that? You can also use a spike if you wish, just so you can see the water leaking. Um, Smart to do a, a straw here, so you can move the spike either side of the banana. So that's one idea. This is quite permanent. You won't have any troubles with pups clamping this shut. We did find that our trickle tape was getting clamped by the banana pups at about eight or nine months. But with this stuff, you just pull it out of the way. And it can even sit over here and you can run your straws over to your plants like that, if you wish. So they're out of the way, the pups, they won't get clamped. And we have ex uh, examples of this type of irrigation now lasting for at least six years without any major dramas. So a little bit different this row. As you see, we've done our usual va valley and hills. We've deep ripped. We've incorporated a lot of rock dust into this one, double the amount, and just a couple of bags of chukpu. Um, but so far, uh, we have just realized that you cannot overplant. And you might ask why these sticks are here. These are just our positions for the pawpaw. And just so we remember to do it later in spring when the frost has passed. So for us, that'll be the end of August. Uh, we don't want to risk $18 uh, commercial plants. And we've had early frost this year. We've already had a couple of frosts and it's only May. It's quite unusual this year. Climate change, natural weather patterns, who knows? That's up to you to decide. But you just gotta roll with it. So any questions, just leave them in uh, the likes and comments. And say good day to our team. This is Diego, our, our right hand man. Morning. And, uh, Afternoon, brother. You can turn the camera around and have a look at Will. Yeah. Extremely handsome fellow. That's it. <laughs> and uh, these guys are busy as you. hanging up our other row here. And a very similar pattern, uh, we've planted uh, 12 persimmon trees, the fruit we love up here in Queensland. And the birds and the bats like them too, so you're probably gonna have to net these if you plant these, but they are a beautiful fruit. A persimmon, if you don't know, is orange. It's crunchy like an apple, and it tastes like a date, and a custard apple. A bit of a mix, so at least it does to me. So it's one of my favourite fruits. 
and uh, worked good money down in the markets. So this is our latest, latest, sorry, la, uh, latest two rows, and uh, we'll uh, check on their progress as time goes by and, and do more videos on them. So that's over and out for Farmer Jones, video number 39. We'll see you on video number 40. And uh, like and subscribe, and thanks very much. Cheers.